Hi guys, in this video we will have a look at security policy rules using the Palo Alto Networks firewall. I've already logged in, so if we go to policies here, and we're in the security section here, this is where we create our firewall policy rules. And we can see we've got two implicit rules already on here. Um, so we've got the intrazone default rule at the top, and we've got the interzone default rule at the bottom. So this basically means, intrazone basically means all traffic within a zone so uh, for example uh, it could be all uh, traffic within the LAN zone uh, from the LAN zone to the LAN zone uh, will be applied with this security policy rule and if we go to action it's saying that it's allowed uh, so all traffic within a zone is allowed so if we click cancel here we can also see the action here allow and then we've got the interzone so that means all traffic between zones from one zone to another zone and again if we go to action we can see it's denied uh, we can see it's denied here the other thing uh, what you may notice is everything is grid out so everything is grid out here so these two rules you cannot delete them but we can change the settings and the way we change the settings is at the bottom here we've got the the option of um, override sorry so because I've already changed this rule it's only giving me the option of revert which I'll show you in a second but if we revert the rule back to its original um, we can click it again and we can click on override here so by clicking override it lets us change the settings um, so now if we go to actions you can see they're not grayed out anymore and um, what I typically do is specify um, deny here I deny this rule so we've got a clean slate um, you can optionally log the rule as well which is best practice and if when I've clicked OK you can see here both rules are denied so I've got a clean slate now so any rule I create is my rule I'm completely in control of my rules and I don't want to allow intrazone um, traffic anyway so what we can do now is at the bottom here we can see we've got this add option so this is how we um, add a new rule so I've clicked it and we get the security policy rule um, options in here so we can see there's quite a lot of options in here um, so you can create rules based on zones IP addresses applications ports source users host information profiles user categories uh, so there's quite a lot of options uh, which we will have a look at now and uh, by default uh, there's the intrazone and interzone rules here and you can choose them in the rule type here as well so the first thing it wants is a name so if we go for LAN users to uh, let's go for to DMZ and then there's a the rule type so if I click down here so again we've got the intrazone traffic within the zone into zone traffic between zones and we've got the universal so this is the default this is the most commonly used um, type so we will go with universal and then uh, we can give it a description so LAN users to DMZ we can also give it a tag as well here basically the tag is a keyword or a phrase to make it easier for you to find or sort the rules using the tag keyword uh, using a feature called the tag browser or in the, even in uh, the global find so you can apply tags uh, to zones addresses and services as well not just the rule but if we give it a tag on underscore users um, so this tag is applied to the rule so if you imagine we've got hundreds or thousands of rules here all the way down and you're looking for a rule or rules that apply to all the LAN users and you know you've used tags in every rule address and object um, that's where it comes in handy because it will show you the rules with the tags of LAN users for example then you can group rules by tags here as well uh, an option to group the rules by tags and um, you can put an audit comment in here for auditors as well so the next section is source if we go to source we've got two sections in here uh, we've got the left which is a source zone and we've got the right which is a source address and we've also got any so um, we 
can specify source zone in here, LAN, and if you don't have any source zone, you can specify any here. Click on any. You can also choose multiple zones, so LAN and WAN. But let's uh, delete that for simplicity. So the way we delete it is make sure it's selected and click delete here. And then on the right, we've got source addresses. So if we click add here, we can see um, gives us all our addresses here. Um, or even regions as well here so these are geographical regions and we can uh, choose addresses or address groups or we can click it from here by clicking I mean create new one from here so let's create a new address called LAN underscore um, users I may already have one created but let's uh, try and create it again uh, IP uh, netmask so let's go with uh, 10 dot uh, 20.10.0/24 as i said we can uh, tag addresses as well so let's give it a tag on users here so for the type we've uh, got ip net mask uh, selected but there's also the options ip range ip wildcard mask and a fully qualified domain name so the top two are the most uh, commonly used options ip net mask is this one click OK and we've got a source address here um, so geographical regions here you can create a new one here give it a name and uh, specify the region here uh, or we can um, if we go to add again we've got them all here as well down here um, but you may want to be very specific about it so add um, region and then um, choose the region and then you may know the public IP addresses of the region as well or something so you can add that in here as well um, so that's for source and uh, source zone and source address uh, moving on to users so by default users uh, the default is any so you'd notice you've always got this option of any in many of these tabs here so it's also, you know, I've already shown it in the source tab, any, any, we've got it in application, any, destination, any, etc. So if we go back to users, and the left hand side is the source users. If you have a firewall capturing user information, uh, using the user ID feature for capturing usernames and IP addresses, using LDAP or RADIUS for example, or even if you've uh, got users on the current firewall, on the firewall itself, you can uh, specify the users in here we click on add and you can add the users or the user groups and you may be pulling these from Active Directory which is the most commonly used uh, uh, scenario and then on the right you've got HIP profiles basically this is a collection of machine attributes for example you might want to choose all laptops that have the latest antivirus signatures before the device uh, is permitted so you can select them all in here and the option is here add and then you can create a new hip profile from here so um, if we uh, leave this area blank uh, we don't have any users any hip profiles and go to destination if you notice the the red here that means it's a mandatory field that needs filling in um, so source zone and destination zone and an action and a name is mandatory so uh, make sure those are filled out otherwise it won't let you apply ok here you can see it's grayed out here um, so let's give it a zone uh, a destination zone of 1 or let's give it DMZ actually click DMZ so that's what the uh, rule is reflecting and then uh, destination address optionally let's uh, specify address uh, let's just uh, pick out an address from here um, just to make it quicker so we've got an address from here we've got a zone here let's move on to application so in the application section we can uh, specify an application the most common application example is Facebook so selecting Facebook so if you're going out to the internet this rule is for internet users uh, we might select Facebook and if you select Facebook the um, sub applications will also be selected as well so if we select the parent application whatever is applied in the actions will be applied to the um, sub um, application so all of these or you can select these and be very specific as well 
so you might allow Facebook but uh, you might want to block some of these specific ones such as Facebook chat anyway so you can uh, specify it from here let's click delete moving on to service and URL categories so on the left you've got services and this is uh, applications is the more advanced uh, new new generation method of uh, specifying applications based on the lay seven signatures but you might want to stick to the traditional method or there is no signature for it so we just specify a, a port for it for example so um, yeah you've got options in here as well by default application default is uh, selected so application default means it only applies the application on its default port so HTTP on port 80 or HTTPS on port 443 any is anything here and uh, we can also add our own uh, services in here um, so if we click add here add new service we can create a new service in here give it a service name um, custom service on a specific TCP port uh, 5556 and um, yeah you've got some other options here session timeout and a tag as well so you can specify a tag for the service and then we click OK here we've got our custom service here on the right we've got categories URL categories so again if it's going out to the internet you can specify URL categories so you might want to block abortion abuse drugs um, adult size alcohol and tobacco and etc uh, from users uh, accessing them websites or you might want to allow certain sites as well certain categories of websites such as uh, home and garden etc health and medicine so you can uh, choose all them from here and finally we go to the actions uh, tab uh, the action tab first what do we want to do allow it we've also got deny uh, here or drop which is a silent drop not notifying the user just drop it we've also got some reset actions here reset just the client or the server or even both uh, so the bottom three are very specific use cases uh, that's a specific use case so the most common two are deny and allow here profile settings so if you've got uh, security profiles um, all configured you may want to turn them on from here so we can choose our individual profiles from here so we can see we've got antivirus vulnerability protection which is uh, IPS IDS got anti spyware URL filtering file blocking data filtering uh, wildfire cloud analysis as well here so um, we can select all that in here or we can group all this so separately from um, objects you can uh, group all that into profile groups as well and then just specify the profile group in here instead so if we select that you've got group option here you can specify your profile group here or you can even create a new one from here as well so you've got that option and uh, finally the last two on the second on the right hand side you've got log settings if you want to log it so log at session end is the most common one if you're troubleshooting a very specific use case if you're troubleshooting the rule you might want to log at session start as well um, just bear in mind with logging it has a hit on your load so your storage and your CPU as well so uh, by all means log but log in a, a controlled fashion uh, you can also forward the logs you can also forward the logs to a syslog server or SIM etc finally you've got your last uh, bits of the settings you can schedule it schedule the rule you might want to uh, schedule it for a specific time or a specific day of the week uh, so you can set your schedules from here um, and then you can apply cross markings to the rule as well and if we click OK it will create the rule and you can see it's created the rule from here what we can do is select the rule by clicking here and we can clone it here so you've got options here right at the bottom here if we clone the rule click on this rule to clone and then uh, you can specify where the rules go going to be placed move to the top bottom rule before rule after after the rule so after this rule which is the current selected rule and um, if we click OK here it's created it so if we go into it to change the name maybe this is the rule we want to apply to our internet users so our users go into the internet so internet users to the internet uh, we might want to uh, just change some of these so it reflects that so LAN, LAN users that's fine anyone any hit profile fine destination zone let's go with 
uh, one out to the internet uh, let's uh, delete this and let's go with any so anything on the internet application um, let's go with um, any application and you might want a um, a specific set of your categories or and also you might want just HTTP selected here and HTTPS as well and then go for some euro categories of uh, business and economy um, let's go with um, educational institutes that sort of thing so go to actions and uh, I'm going to allow um, this rule so user allow to browse uh, these euro categories basically and yeah we've got actions finally there's a usage option here so it just shows you some stats on the rule as well click OK here and we've um, created our first two rules so that's pretty much it for creating rules and then we've also got some uh, options at the bottom here just to manage the rules so we've got add uh, if you select a rule you can see you can delete it from here you can clone it from here the override and revert are for the implicit rules here so if we click on the implicit we can override it uh, you can't revert it because we've never made any changes to it but the one that we did make changes to intrazone default we can revert it from here we've also got some uh, validation checks here as well uh, you can export the rules to PDF CSV from here but uh, you can highlight unused rules uh, reset the hit counters etc from here um, what else you can do is uh, when you commit the um, when you commit the firewall you can um, also see if um, there's any shadowed rule so a rule that is uh, shadowing another rule uh, it will do a validation check upon commit over there and uh, test policy match I'll uh, cover this in another video so finally the last thing I want to show is these columns here so we can click a specific column go to columns and you can see which columns have been checked here and which ones are unchecked so you can um, check or uncheck as required uh, for yourself uh, whichever ones you need that's it for this video thanks for watching